my friends. Cameraman has pointed at me, telling me that it was time for me to start talking. Hello, it is good to see you. Happy, happy Saturday. I hope you are all having a wonderful day. Welcome to the Gooey Cube and Goo Morning Zayathe with me, Alphineas Goo, and dear Cameraman behind the camera. Say hello, Cameraman Hello. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. So we are very excited today for a number of reasons. First of all, all of the people at our office that have had the COVID are now clear. So we are very excited about that, right? Mm -hmm. And we are, yeah, right, Mandy? We, yes. Had, yes. we had kind of a, a mad madness that was going on here for about two weeks. And of course, part of that uh, came with Gen Con, right? Uh, and, uh, and Gen Con was incredibly marvelous. And we have uh, such, uh, such gratitude to the GUI people who were out there, who not just only ran wonderful games and wonderful events for so many people at Gen Con, they also saved us. Uh, I mean, we, we had uh, th three quarters of our crew couldn't come. Uh, so it was, uh, and, and yours truly was not quite myself. But anyway, it was a wonderful time. And Mandy, you're putting up some uh, images. Yes, you're putting up a lot of pictures here. Yes, these are from our Facebook page, the Gooey Game Masters Den of Enlightenment. Yes, there's uh, Michelle and that, uh, I yes. can't quite see, is that, uh, go back for that is Michelle and, uh, Casey, and Casey and, and uh, I can't quite. It's a oh, I've met him before. He was there last year. Uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, I just can't see it. It's too. Uh, anyway, we'll we'll yeah. figure it out. But uh, but I, uh, you know, the, there's a lot of wonderful cosplayers. These are all Casey's pictures. He oh, went around okay. and took pictures with everyone. There's Mark. Yeah. <laughs> there's all Mark. Yes, in front of that thing. And yes, these are wonderful. You know, we just uh, we had such a great time. We had folks at the at the party. We had like a hundred and hundred and ten people, hundred twenty people at our party. And next year, I think it's going to be five hundred people. So we're very excited. We're going to have music maybe even a little dancing next year we'll see what happens but it was uh, it was a magnificent time and we made a lot of new friends and I think some of you might even be watching this this morning all right so we are changing up good morning Zayathe quite significantly based on a lot of input that we got from all of you we're going to try to present more lore deeper lore more artworks and more information um, that is more specific rather than sort of a uh, sort of uh, gross right uh, big uh, high whatever you want to say right so uh, so I think you're gonna really enjoy the show today we did have to pre-record this by the way because Mandy had something that came up that was very important so we all got up early and came in here and went crazy and we got this done so the first thing we're gonna do here though is the Thu'ul make a meme contest winners right camera Mandy yes uh, Aha. so we have five winners these were so originally we were gonna do three right that was but now yes. we, we did five because there was so many good there were so many good ones <laughs> okay so our first winner is Peter. Yes, well, it's really Andy, but uh, but uh, yes, Alphineas Roth was great. Whoever signed him up anonymously for the Hat of the Month Club was doomed. <laughs> I like the way that you read that. Yeah, thank you very much. No, it was good. It was, uh, this made me cackle when I saw it uh, the first time. It was you know, good. hat jokes in our group, uh, <laughs> winners, winners. Absolutely. Just, just know that, so, yeah. So all of you, are, all of you winners are going to get a, a, a print of your, of your uh, 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 Thu'u meme uh, signed by the Goo Crew, and we're going to send it out to you, and you can uh, put it on the wall or use it for firewood or whatever you choose. But we think, I think it'll be a fun thing for you to put on your wall. So this is this is from Todd, yes? Yes. Uh, so uh, read this one because it is small. Oh, I know, yeah. uh, we've been trying to reach you concerning your vehicle's extended warranty. <laughs> yes, yes, I remember that one too. It made me laugh. Well done, Todd. That is uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, you got a lot of people uh, with thumbs up and likes, and uh, and uh, that is definitely <laughs> that is definitely appropriate for the image. Now this is from our friend Matt. The GM's face when the group cancels game day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> which uh, which was quite funny, and uh, again was uh, was uh, got a lot of uh, got a lot of likes from our gooey people. This one I personally relate to. <laughs> yes, Skip. Very good. This what is, do you mean no coffee? <laughs> this is what Adam says I look like if I uh, haven't had some coffee in the morning. So, and this one was I think the golden winner. You think this was what everybody's oh, yes. most number one favorite? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was from Christy, right? Because <laughs> everybody can relate to this. We have all felt this pain. <laughs> <laughs> when you eat the hot pocket before letting it cool down. Yes, yes. Christy, marvelous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so those are our five winners, and we'll uh, send some stuff out uh, to you all for that. Uh, so that is uh, that is marvelous. Yeah. So, so the next thing that we're going to do, and this is going to be a feature that we're going to do on Good Morning Zayafe every week, we are going to begin to feature our marvelous people 
who have made portraits and characters in the world of Xia Fei. And uh, sometimes we might do two or three, depending on timing, uh, but today, because we're gonna spend so much time on the Bundelin, uh, we, uh, we're only going to do one. And honestly, um, uh, I couldn't think of a more appropriate uh, first one to do than a uh, marvelous uh, Rainy Winsong. And, uh, and uh, Rainy is a wonderful character uh, who is Michelle, and you can see what we did with the portrait here, and it is just I I incredible, uh, you know, uh, this, this Rainy who, who is going to be, I think, such a wonderful feature in, in the gloom port. Do you want to just read that little tale just a little bit? Just, this is a quick yes. little tale, give you a little bit of information that, uh, that Michelle put up in the, in the Facebook page. Yes, I'm going to read this. My voice is not as good as Alphineas's, but I'll do my You've got best. this, Carmamendi. Okay. Get, a little, get a little resonance. Yes, a little resonance. A little resonance. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. That's not resonance. That sounds like you're going to scratch it. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Rainy Windsong has a quaint little store called Windsong's Windfalls that carries an assortment of wind chimes and odd musical instruments from all over the world. Some made of rare and beautiful gemstones and strange metals, some of wood and ancient bone and polished stone, all play their unique songs. Some twinkle, some chime, others emit an ominous moan as the winds flow through intricate hollows. But only Rainy knows that they, are, that they all come with a story for her, a tale from far away of magicians and sorcerers, of smugglers and traitors. All are important to one who seeks to protect the sanctity of the flow stones. Always on the lookout for nefarious ones who seek the stones for their evil deeds. Oh, and you can also have a nice mug of some homebrewed med medicinal <laughs> mead. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's right. You can come to our dojo yeah, and have a little yeah. sip. Yes, a little taste. <laughs> Made with only the finest honey and herbs, it does a weary traveler good. Yeah, so we've got this marvelous lore around Rainy, and it is uh, it'll be in the gloom. Uh, the, excuse me, the Darkenhaven box, and you will uh, you will learn about some of the little secrets that she has going on, and and this is just one of many uh, that uh, that are our people. I think we've done over a hundred and some portraits now of our people, which is just uh, just amazing. And I cannot, uh, I cannot wait to have the, the, these all sort of come together in this, in this marvelous uh, city, these two city boxes that we are working on right now. So that is our dear Rainy Windsong, and she is the first of many that we will be talking to you about. And so. um, if you aren't a part of the GUI uh, Game Masters of Enlightenment, you might not have seen this before. Uh, basically, you submit your photo, like you can see on the left here, that um, Michelle sent in a, just a regular photo, and then our And then a description. We give yeah, a description of the character yeah. as you want it to be, right? And then also a sort of a backstory, right, that that would work in the world of Xia Fei, and, uh, and that's how our portrait program works. And uh, we have even had a, a number of folks, um, uh, much to our honor and, and to our, our thankfulness, sorry, McCann Remendi, I bumped the, the, the microphone there, but uh, uh, who have actually memorialized uh, loved ones that they have lost. Uh, in yes, in 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 Zia Fe. and it is uh, it is special. Um, a, a special. Yes, it is very special. So so that is our marvelous Rainy, and we are excited to uh, to uh, show her to you. And there will be more coming. There are many more coming. Yes, many indeed, more. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, this is what is next, Camera Mandy. Next is your reading. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. So my friends, we those of you who are uh, maybe perhaps viewing the stream for the first time. Um, Camera Mandy has asked me to do readings from the Ventenium Alunax, which is the first, basically, the first chapter, if you will, in the Cyclopedia Zyathaca Volume 1, which is called The Weirded World. And this, this uh, Vent Chronicles of the Ventenium Alunax really give the story of the creation of, of this marvelous world of Zyathe and the fall uh, when the, the high magics were d corrupted and destroyed and, the, uh, and all of magic was infested with the, the grievous uh, never, nether flow. And uh, so we, uh, we, have, we have passed the point now where the, where the, uh, the God's War has happened and the, the four lords of corruption have been um, uh, imprisoned in the never place uh, as Avo Va sacrificed uh, himself to merge himself into the the uh, Everflow, which is which is the Zianthus, which is magic in the world of Zayathe. And now uh, we have we have come to this place now where magic is actually more powerful than it has ever been uh, because of this uh, this phenomenon with uh, with Avo Va and sacrificing himself. And so now we come to the place where the sort of pinnacle of civilization 
and the age before the new age, which is the age now, uh, uh, begins, which is the Etherns arise. Across the face of Zyothe, and even in the depths beneath the surface, incredible works of magic were crafted. In their studies, the great mages learned that they could wield spells of the 10th, 11th, and even the 12th cycle. And as their learnings grew, so did their prowess. And lo, this new society used its powers to enhance their wondrous achievements and shape the life world to their liking. They carved mighty mountains, altered the courses of the greatest rivers, and even bent the weather to their wills. They caused the oceans to recede and made the lands more fruitful in the bearing of crops. It is said that their architecture, bolstered with spells of creation, was magnificent to behold. Their cities were the picture of unimaginable elegance and beauty, each edifice a work of art, magically crafted from great stones that were then ensorcelled with potent magics that caused them to be as transparent as glass or as pure as gold silver, bronze, mithril, mitrium, or any combination thereof. These structures would then be ensorcelled to cast all manner of beautiful display, beautiful dis goodness gracious, camera Mandy, beautiful displays of light and color. They constructed towers of immeasurable height, reaching to the sky, carved great underground cathedrals, shaped from solid stone in the depths, and even crafted floating cities that flew above the surface of Zyothe, their spires shining in the light of the soul. It seemed that nothing was beyond these most amazing and talented people who named themselves Ithern, which means wisdom in their ancient tongue. Indeed, not even those who were referred to as the lesser races, the Arachnoid, the Gargantua, the Canius, and the Algidians and others, made trouble for the Empire. For though these races were warlike and had relegated, been relegated to the outskirts of the civilized nations due to their bent towards evil, the Etherns were simply too powerful to contest against. And for many centuries, the Ethernic civilization prospered. But as with anything, not even the wonders of the Etherns were perfect, and no matter how bright the light, darkness abides in the shadow. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, the next chapter is called The Shadows Cast. I don't understand why things just can't be happy in in this world. Uh, because it would be boring. I, I, boring. I, I, boring. I don't boring. know boring. about boring. that. Boring, boring, yes, boring, <laughs> boring, boring. Ah, uh, yes, I'm getting a phone call from Mike. Yes, Mike is doing better, too. Thanks to all of you for your well wishes for the two of us. Yes, we were quite sick. But uh, thank you to, to all of you. We were, you have no idea what it has meant to us uh, uh, with, with the, the craziness of the last uh, three weeks. So, yes. cheers. Thank you guys so much for bearing with us. As um, I know our Good Morning Zayate schedule was a little interrupted as well. Um, but yes, we're and we're going to do it from uh, Origins next week, yes? Is we're gonna do, um, uh, I, I think that we'll at least do a cameo from yeah, yeah, Origins. We're, yes, we're going to do yeah. something fun from Origins. Obviously, we won't do our full format because it's, uh, it's just not possible uh, to it's do. It's too crazy. Especially when you see what we're going to do today. I hope you love this, yes. my friends. You, I got all this wonderful feedback from you, and we are, we are, we are going to try to make this happen. It's a little more work on camera, Mandy and me, but, uh, but we, think it's, uh, we think you're going to love it. We think it's worth it. It's absolutely okay. worth it. So um, why don't we go ahead and start? Why don't we go ahead and talk about what's, what we're about to do? All right. We are going to begin today to do two things. We're going to, we're going to delve into the races a little deeper. Uh, we're going to talk really in depth about the Gurund. But before we do that, we're going to begin sort of our in-depth tour of areas of the world of Zyothe. And we will begin with the marvelous uh, West Vedestia, which is a incredible tome. It is it is beautiful. It has so much wonderful lore. And uh, there, Camera Mandy showed us the world. Camera, go, Camera Mandy, go back for just one second. So, for those of you who are new, who maybe don't know, um, uh, there are there are five, uh, excuse me, six major continents in the world of Zyothe. The top left, which is to the northwest, which is the long continent, there is Nordruka, and Nordruka is the uh, the a rockanoid uh, stronghold, if you will. It is many war tribes, and there are uh, many powers there. 
and they uh, made war upon the continent to the south of them, which is Verdestia. Verdestia was actually one continent, which is now broken into two uh, after the cataclysm of the Woe of Ruin. So it is now West Verdestia, called the Westverd, and East Verdestia, called the Essenverd. South of Verdestia is Sundestia, which is um, a, a wonderful, amazing place that we are actually working on right now, and it's going to be inspired by uh, African and uh, Indian and, um, and Egyptian cultures sort of kind of mashed up, and we have some wonderful experts who are actually uh, very knowledgeable in these things who are helping us, and uh, I just uh, I cannot wait for us to move to Sundestia. In the middle of the, of the world here, to, uh, to that right there, this, is, this was Resplansia. And this was the original seat of the Aethernic power. This was their, their continent. And uh, it was majestic to behold before the Woe of Ruin. I'm not going to get too much into these things. I just want to let people know uh, about them because we're going to talk about uh, the Boonderland uh, as part of our tour here. So if you go now to the west, excuse me, to the east of uh, Resplansia, this is Sundestia, excuse me, Zustrenia. And Zustrenia is much like uh, South Central America. And, and all, of our all of our world is going to be inspired by these wonderful cultures of our world and, and the lore and, and the magic and the, and the, 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 the myth that, that these wonderful places have. And so we're very excited to, to work on Zustrenia eventually here and bring all of this wonderful, uh, marvelous uh, myth and lore that, uh, that, that, that the South and Central American people uh, have within their cultures. So we're very, very stoked about this. And then this is, uh, this is Estrenia, and Estrenia is going to be sort of inspired by the Far East uh, of our world, uh, the, uh, Korea and Japan and, and, uh, and uh, China, and, and we're going to bring a lot of that feel uh, you know, again, with with the Zayafe mashup, right? It's not going to be that culture. It's going to be its, it's own fantasy. thing. Yes, fantasy. That's exactly right. But it's going to be incredibly marvelous. All right, Camera Mandy, let us go to West Vedestia. Okay, so basically, um, just to orient anybody who's new, we are going to take a look at this uh, this part of this is where we're going to begin yeah. our tour. Sure, yes, yeah. this is West Vedestia. And so this this is the more detailed, beautiful map of West Verdestia. And there are basically, there are, uh, if you will, eight sections of, of West Verdestia. If we begin in the north uh, west, we start with a Magdronog, which is an arachnoid controlled territory. Beneath that is a place called the Vile Desolation, which has wonderful lore. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but this is where the undead began to rise of their own accord some time ago. And now this entire place is uh, ruled by the undead. South of that is the Republic of Xeranthia, which is where we're going to begin our tours. And south of that is the old sovereignty of Andavala, uh, which is right there. And then beneath that, the wonderful Blue Shine Archipelago and uh, the Isle of Albus. And then if we go back up, uh, back up to, or go to the, what would be easier on go to the, go to the east, camera man, you don't, don't go, okay, well, go up then. Oh, oh, oh the east? Oh, there like over here? Yes. Okay. So this is, uh, this is Shard and Gloom, which is the, the land of the Skundrus, which is a, a wonderful new race that we are bringing. We will talk about them uh, in one of our future, uh, future streams. And they have actually come across now and have, have begun to, uh, to uh, occupy portions of the Shadelands. Uh, in particular, this thing called the Blood Veil, where there is there is much magic and strange uh, strange happenings. The so. Blood Veil may be my beautiful my my, my most favorite art. Yeah, well, oh, that picture yeah. uh, so is wonderful. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We'll show that when we do uh, when we talk about this yeah. uh, in future stream. Absolutely. North of of this is the Leviathan Bay nations. There are four nations there that uh, sort of squabble amongst themselves. There's some nice uh, nice tension politically and all of that stuff. And, um, and to Tension? The Again, <laughs> why? All this drama, all this intrigue. It's what makes it good, right? <laughs> and then to the north of that is the, the marvelous Netherland, which is an area of terrible, fearful corruption. Right. And, um, and, uh, and I want to tell you that what's exciting about this is that somewhere around 40, 50 people I actually made contributions to uh, West Verdestia in terms of that being in our lore book. And we also had a number of marvelous uh, folks who uh, actually wrote sections uh, in conjunction with us. 
So this is part of our thing, right? Is to give people the opportunity to publish. All right, let us look at okay. the Bundelen. Uh, so first, okay, so again, like we're trying to help everyone be oriented here. Um, so we are gonna go to this area, the Republic of Zaranthia. So yes. That's gonna be the next map. So let's go ahead and switch over there. So this is a close up of the Republic of Zaranthia. And there are, there are a number of different areas, right? There's the Northendale, and there's Grandenval, and there's the Midland, and there's the Southern, and then, of course, in the north, which is where we're going to begin, yes. the Boonderland. Yes, right? so, we're gonna, so we're going up, up here. I'm sorry, I don't know if you guys can see my, my mouse going. All right, so next up, here we are. There we are. So, my friends, let me tell you a little about the Boonderland, Boonderland before we, we sort of begin this tour. One of the things that I remember from long ago was this wonderful module called the Keep on the Borderlands. And uh, it is classic, it is marvelous. And when we began sort of dancing with Zayathe and there was this, this wonderful uh, lore of the vile desolation and all these undead that, that lie across the river, which is called the Silvershine River, we thought, well, how would the Republic respond, right? What would they do? And so what the Republic did was they built these, these keeps along the river. And they are all somewhere 25, 30, 35 miles apart. And they are all truly uh, relatively isolated. And the, the, uh, the valley uh, where they are all uh, situated is, is uh, pierced by the Silvershine River. And all of the bridges have been knocked down. All of the fords have been uh, try, uh, adjusted, dug out, uh, trying to do everything they can to keep the things that are across the river from crossing the river. But there is lore, yes, there is fearful lore. Because for many years, the only place that the undead would rise was north of the Silvershine and south of the Ashclot. But of late, it seems to be spreading. And now across the river, there are cases of undead rising of their own accord. And so this gives us this marvelous stew, right? This wonderful place that you can bring your players, right? One of these keeps, and we're gonna talk about each one of these keeps just a little bit and give you some artwork and give you some flavor, right? So that it can really feel, you know, sort of what, it, what it's like. So, so uh, do you want to do that, Camera Mandy? Yes, sorry, I just got like chills. Well, l listen, <laughs> I, I, I love this place, right? Because, because it is, it, even though it is part of the Republic, it is still, you know, it's isolated and you can, you can feel the mists that rise off the river, you know, and, and the, the, the fog, and, and at night the howls of the, and screeches of the undead across the river, and, and all of these places, right, are, 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 they have soldiers, right, and they have, they have uh, mercenary companies, and all of these different groups there, and to go to one of these keeps, and you'll see what, you know, what we sort of picture them as as we go through, to go to here, and, 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 and part of the problem is, right, that they, they can only get so much funding, right, this is very expensive expensive to to keep this this place here so some of the keeps are a little dilapidated and uh, you know there's a lot of uh, fear of all of this this thing that is happening in the vile desolation so I hope uh, I yeah. hope you enjoy this little tour that can we're you about just, to give. I was just gonna say before we start like can you just imagine a campaign where you guys go from keep to keep to keep for some reason and like you have to keep fighting in these battles yes. against the undead I'm just saying like there's even if you don't play the uh, Darkest Dream or the Red Star Rising campaign, there is so much here to oh, create yes. campaigns from. Like, I mean, <laughs> this is one tiny section yes. of that freaking humongous <laughs> map. So, well, and the thing is, what uh, what most uh, what some know, what they backed our Kickstarter, is the marvelous uh, adventure called The Dead in Fallow. Right is being uh, written by John, and John is uh, John is a marvelous writer who is one of our people, and um, we are really excited about this little adventure that's going to take your players to one of the keeps, and then across the river oh, to the undead town of Fallow. So exciting! Yes, right, yes, yes, yes. All right, let's, let's do get some started. dancing. Right? Yeah, let's get started. Okay. So, so the skies of Zayathe, right? They, 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 there is the red star in the sky right now, but there is, you know, there is the large moon, which is Luneos, right? Which has the three dancers that that dance around it, and and then of course the small moon, which is which is called Vixen, and uh, the, the 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 moons actually since the War of Ruin act 
erratically, actually. And there is, there is strange patterns to them that even today some of the astrologers and astronomers are trying to figure out because they have begun to see that it is not as erratic as perhaps that they thought. And there is some magic that is, uh, that is around this. But, th but this, as you look at this image, right, this is the feel of the river. This is the feel of the Buundulun at the northern border. And you can just, you, can you not hear it, right? Can you not hear the, the howls in the dark, right? The screeches, the screams, right? I mean, I, yes. Rip, ripples in the water, right? What is that? What is that? And the gods upon the towers, upon the ramparts, looking, searching, seeing if they are coming. Yes. It's marvelous. Yes, Cameron Mendy. Uh, you guys aren't seeing my reactions, but I'm like, woohoo, okay. <laughs> so this is the feel. Go, keep going. Let us, let us look at another okay, image, the next, right? The next one. So we want to give you this feel of this, right? So this is our dance, right? So, so the river is big. The river, the silver shine is very wide. It is not the biggest river in the Republic area, right? But it, but it is it is wide, and um, and it's slow moving in certain areas and very fast moving in others. But you can see how desolate the 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 the, the borderland is, right? It's it's borderland, right? You can see how desolate and 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 cr and really creepy, right? Yeah. And you you just get this feel for how for how the 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 parties, right? As they as they leave the keeps and go explore certain areas, right? And certain for certain things, right? And and go ahead, let's look at the next one. Okay. I hope you are enjoying this. This is a lot of fun for Camera Mandy and me to put together. So this is the important thing to understand. For across the river, right, is not just the vile desolation, but the undead city of Covenant and towns that also have living undead that are intelligent, right? And this is the thing that the, that the people of the Republic are so afraid of, is what is going to happen if those hordes of undead come across the river and they are not prepared that is the truth that so is, go ahead come if on. they're thinking undead like does that mean that they can strategize yes well, it's we, not well, just a horde oh, ab absolutely it's because like they're actually and they i'm wow no, no, absolutely, because yeah. as you know, we have our, we even have our race, right, which is the Fazud, which are intelligent undead that people, characters, right, they play, players can actually make characters from. So these and aren't this, just mindless zombies. No, there are lots of those too, well, right, okay. right, and, and they're gu, <laughs> gauls and all kinds of uh, creepy things, right, but, right. but they're, they are all presided over by, by uh, the dread lich, Kal Novik. And there's many tales to tell, but I don't want to get all caught up with, with uh, know, the dial desolation. I'm just going to say, <laughs> if you were to have another campaign from the opposite <laughs> end where you are an army of undead trying to get across and they're trying to keep you out. I mean, there is so much to win back here. Okay. Yes, well, and, and, the, and the Arachnoids to the far north, right? Them trying to right, you build a whole character set there, right? And a whole player group that is trying to invade the Vile Desolation, right? And it so just gets into yeah. all the complexities of humanity. Yes, or, yes. well, I, I don't know if it's humanity. Uh, uh, Zyatha Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, let us continue. Okay, let us continue. Next up. Uh, <gasps> so yes, yeah, so no. <laughs> so right, you are on the ramparts, right? You are standing there, and it is dark, right? But you look down into the water, right? And there, crossing the river, you can see them, right? And then you go to battle. And this is not an uncommon occurrence in the Bundelun. It is not a common occurrence along the river. In fact, some undead hordes have even gone south and reached past the keeps into the heartland of the Bundelun. So this is, I hope you are getting the feel of this and I hope it is making you like, wow, right? Go, go ahead, Camera Mendy, let's, let's look at next. What, what is next? Yes, yeah, so also, this is important. There are many ruins along the river on both sides, right? Because this was a, the area where the war really, you know, happened, right? And so there are many places for your characters, your player characters to explore. And, uh, and they are not just uh, filled with undead creatures. There are many monsters and other types of fearful things that, uh, that they could come against, right? And, and perhaps even ethernic artifacts from long ago. Yes, continue, continue, cameraman, continue. Yes, so, so again, you know, just to, uh, we wanted to, to try to give you this feel of the river and the feel of the mist. And, and can you not see your party, you know, walking along, right? And, or on a right? boat. Or on a boat. 
So, Paddling, yes. Uh, like, imagine, I imagine this, like, river has, like, different textures along the way. Oh, yes. So, like, there's some swamp stuff. Yes, boggy, boggy areas yeah. and marshes. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, I, I, I'm definitely, like, to me, um, I feel how different this could be. Like, this could be, like, a sing like a long campaign, just oh, like yes. going down the river. How long would you say it would take to get down the river? So the river, uh, off the top of my head, I, I believe is about three hundred uh, miles long. Three hundred. It runs from the from the mountains to uh, to the bay. But I think it's about three hundred miles. So you know, if you're if you're doing five, four, five miles an hour, you know, you can do the math. I wish Howard was here because I'm not quick at that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us see the next one. So, so again, you can see how large the river is, right? I want you to understand this is not this is not narrow. This is this is like Mississippi esque, right? It's got this this breadth, and and so that is some comfort to the people of the the Bundelen because it's a little harder for these undead to get across this. I would assume right? that that there's some parts where. It's thicker in some parts where Yes, where it gets thinner. narrows, yeah. right, and gorges, right, and yeah. there's a more faster moving, right, and, and rocks and, and those and kinds so of things. And so they really shore up where... Absolutely. Where it's de uh, more accessible. Oh, yes, yeah. where it is shallower, right, yeah. where it could be forded, right? Yeah. So, all right, marvelous. And, of course, this is the thing, right? This is your players are walking through and they are traveling and then out of the... Out of the the mist, out of the woods, right, come creatures that uh, that uh, want to attack them, right, want to create problems for them and bring mystery and intrigue. Continue on, Camera Mandy. Okay. Yes, hordes of them, perhaps, maybe more than they could handle. Because this is the fear, right? You look at this and you think of yourself standing on the ramparts and looking across the river and suddenly out of the stand of woods that you can see, right, is not 10, not 15, not 20, but hundreds and hundreds of mindless undead led by those who have intelligence, right? Wow. <laughs> who, who were these undead? I'm sorry if I missed that. No, no. So, so they are called the Fazud, right? Uh -huh. So the Fazud are the intelligent, this, this intelligent beings that rose of their own accord. And like I said, there's, there's wonderful lore behind this. And when we talk about the vile desolation, we will talk about Indriana, the goddess who was slain there by, by uh, Flemerish. And uh, and we will speak of this, but but not yet. This okay. is coming. This is okay. coming. Okay, I'm yeah. so curious to hear like <laughs> who these people were before they were undead. Yeah. Oh well, no. They they all the the many that were killed, killed in the yeah. wars, right? There was a huge war in this entire area where you know countless thousands, countless thousands died. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. So and then of course there was people who just died there were buried right over time. So there was a lot of corpses. How long, like have these how long has it been since they've risen? Or Two, ab about two hundred years, years. Okay. right? Since the uh, since the ten years war between Magdunog and the northern area of the of the republic. So uh -huh. let us continue. So this is the fear, <gasps> yes. right? You can see the, them coming to you, right? You can see them them uh, coming to destroy you, to eat you, right? To consume you, right? And this is uh, this is that dance. All right, keep going, keep going, camera ready. So again, the feel of the river, right? The feel of the mists, right? Sloshing through the, the peat and the, and the algae, right? And the smell, right? And, and the bullfrogs in the background. And then suddenly you hear snapping of twigs and something emerges. All right, let's talk about the keeps. That is our thing, yes? So uh, this is our next uh, stuff that we're gonna do. So we're gonna do a quick little chat about each one of the keeps, and then we will, uh, we will uh, finish the Abunderland. And again, I hope, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope this is the kind of thing folks were asking for, and if not, I'd love your feedback so that we can, uh, we can adjust even more. Let us continue, Camera Mandy. Absolutely, okay. Um, so we are gonna start going along the river here. Marvelous. And we're starting with O'Burks. Watch. Um, umber, umber, um, um, I'm sorry, Omberg's Watch. Right? Yes. So. Mm. Yes, so Omberg's uh, uh, Watch is uh, more uh, westerly, and it is actually situated up on a, uh, a, a pinnacle. And it is actually rather well funded uh, because of some certain circumstances. But it is a it is definitely a, a keep that uh, that has uh, risk associated with it. Right now, this is not a big place. There are a couple places that you'll see along the river that are much larger. This is a smaller keep, but it is garrisoned well. 
And uh, is that not a marvelous image, just you yeah. know, this, this feel of this place, right? So you come to this place, right, as players, and, and you can feel the grimness of it, right? You can feel the, the grittiness of it, the, the soldiers who look at you as you ride in with their dour faces, yes, marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> And so you can feel, right, Amberg's watch as they look out across the river, yes, and, and, and the mist rises and they're trying to see, are they coming, are they coming, right? And we don't know if they're coming. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> there is also a, 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 a rumored place in the river called the Moon Gate, which is near Amberg's watch. And uh, this is a very mystical and magical place that, uh, that I think uh, folks are going to love. It is not uh, noted in the in the uh, Westford Manual. Uh, it is something that as we begin to move forward, we're going to begin to do a wiki and we're going to begin to add to the lore of the Westford. So the Moon Gate, yes, is, uh, is something that I think many of you will enjoy. And the wiki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wiki. There's a lot That's of people. A lot of there's people a lot of people. people. Well, dear Ryan is actually offered to sort of head that for us. Oh, thank so, you, Ryan. So we're going to uh, we're going to be talking about that he and I after I get back from Origins, and then maybe we can put a little squad together, and uh, you know we'll give them some rewards like we do, and uh, maybe we. Uh, Maybe over the next uh, six months to a year, we end up with this marvelous, uh, marvelous wiki. So. Absolutely. Anyway. Okay, next up is, okay, so we're going to go to the vigil next. Yes, the vigil. So if you guys are following along, so this was where we just were, was Omberg's watch, and now we're going to go to the vigil. Now, we vigil. didn't do the stronghold of the radiant sun, and, and um and I intended to to uh, to get that, but there was there's more to it uh, than than uh, uh, than just some of the other keeps. And the reason is it was made by dear, dear Michael. Michael Renaud uh, was actually a contributor uh, who created the stronghold of the Radiant Sun, and it has an incredible uh, a bunch of lore associated with it. And I just did not have the time to really put it together the way I want to. But but I we, mean, we'll have to just do a Good Morning Zayate on the stronghold uh, of the Radiant well, we Sun. We certainly could. And it, Mike it is, should just come on the show yeah, and talk about it. <laughs> you know, it is, we could do that, actually. Yeah. Michael, we might uh, be calling yes. upon you. Yeah. So, okay. so, But it is really, the lore around it is wonderful, and, um, and it was not there until Michael conceived it and brought it as part of the Contributors Guild. So, yeah. so I, I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, didn't mention that. But let's continue. All right, so this is the vigil. Yes, so the vigil. It looks kind of peaceful, actually. Well, it is a small place, right? And it is right on the river's edge. And it is uh, one of the places that actually, uh, more often than not, uh, finds itself battling against these, uh, these undead that, that come across the river. It is also uh, not as funded as, as, as many would like, and there is uh, some consternation and frustration in the Republic Senate over this. Uh, but the vigil is a you know a marvelous little keep with uh, with uh, some great lore and you should read about it in the in the Westford uh, you will love it and uh, and um, I can't wait to hear tales because I think like they're a, coming. It looks like a monastery. Well, it is no, it is a keep. It is a keep. It is. Oh no, I'm just saying like it has the feel of like. Oh yes, yes, yes. That like it it kind of feels spooky. Uh, sorry, I'm not saying monasteries are spooky. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my. Like, <laughs> but also kind of peaceful. You know, yes. like you could definitely see that there was some like action going on. But it's well, also zo zo zoom back in. Take me out and let's zoom back in in it for just a second. You okay, know, because, hold on a second, guys. Um, um, because it is, uh, it is, it is quite interesting, you know. The the this vigil. Um, I'm looking uh, to to try to add some things to it, but I might not get there. The cameraman he has a couple of things that I had some notes on, but oh, he's you know, he's I, I'm on I'm on the screen because he's currently looking at his uh, computer. Yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> looking. So so you know, but we you know we um, so so I will read this because I think you will like this. The border keep known as the vigil lies to the west of Wardane Shield. Unlike many of the other forts along the Silvershine, this castle was not placed at the location of an old bridge, ferry, or ford. The nearby stretch of river is naturally difficult to cross. Instead, it was built more as a stopover for patrols between the other fortresses, allowing riders to switch to fresh horses, resupply, and catch a few hours of rest and cold drizzle, uh, cold drizzle and driving winds common to the Bundelen. Many argued against the cost of another fort as a secondary location, 
as the expenses of the war were already straining the young republic's finances to the breaking point. However, the most experienced generals argued that no stretch of the silver shine should remain undefended, no matter how unlikely an attack seemed in any particular region. Their concern proved to be well-founded, and Zoranthia is fortunate that the castle was constructed. Yes, and here's where you will hear why I said that they uh, are experiencing uh, a little more activity than was originally anticipated. For many years, the vigil was, as expected, the least troubled of the border forts, providing assistance to the others as necessary, but usually arriving after the battle had concluded. They held provisions for the roaming guard units and deep reserves to resupply other forts after or even during extended sieges, but rarely received any gratitude for their dull but essential efforts. They did, however, attract the attention of the Church of Caqueon, which established a way shrine at the vigil and reinforced its garrison with a detachment of egalitans. This too was fortunate, as the castle's trial by fire was swiftly approaching. Due to the relative inaction in the region, the vigil was, and still remains, the smallest of the keeps, but its towers did not stay idle indefinitely, as the forces of Magdranog and the intelligent under the vile desolation came to realize the strength of the positions along the Silvershine River. They began to look for weak points to exploit. Though by no means an easy crossing, the empty stretch between the vigil and Ombrook's watch was likely the most irregularly watched of all and sparsely defended. Soon bands of stealthy bugbears, covens of stinking gaouls, and even cells of half-orc spies, nearly human in appearance, were quietly crossing the river. Not all survived the journey, but those that did began to wreak havoc upon the countryside. However, these enemies of the Republic had underestimated the sharp eyes and unflagging resolve of the soldiers at the vigil. Lightning quick hunter squads were dispatched to track and eliminate the obvious threats and to root out infiltrators posing as Zoranthian citizens. A brutal but quiet shadow war developed around the vigil and continues to this day. Yes, the vigil. A wow. Place where, your where, was was that, where was that from? So this is from the, the Westward, Westward Tome. Well, guys, you got to go get the Westward <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, it's no marvelous. What is next? What okay. is next? Oh, yes. So so the vigil, this is the idea we wanted to give you, which to show you is, you know, it's a little dilapidated, right? It's a little knocked down. And so, you know, there are these, there are these um, uh, pathways and places where you, you might find yourself a little isolated and feel, you know, a little strange, right? And, and perhaps something might even... Let's go to the next one, cameraman. Something might even come into the keep, right, that you might need to deal with. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, keep done. going, keep going. Yes, just keep going. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking too long, so. Uh, I mean, it is, we are getting long, but <laughs> I, I it's, hope I, it's I, I, so I good. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know. <laughs> We're going to Wardane Shield next. Ah, uh, Wardane Shield. So Wardane Shield, my friends, um, is a uh, a very large uh, locality. It is. Uh, uh, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna look here. I'm not gonna read about it. I just want to tell you about it. But uh, but Wardain Shield is actually um, uh, sponsored by the Church of Wardain, and it is a fairly uh, large uh, uh, large keep, and it has um, uh, has endured uh, quite uh, quite a bit of serious uh, problems issues. Uh, attacks, sieges, and uh, and this this is a uh, this is a little perhaps more like uh, a larger keep, right? This is a place with with more uh, uh, expansive um, government and and oversight, right? This is going to be much more strongly military, and and if you wanted to send your folks to a place where they you know they sort of experience sort of this this much more structured thing, uh, Wardane Shield is definitely uh, wonderful, and then is that is that art not beautiful? Beautiful, right? There's a, another picture of Wardane Shield from from yeah, inside the ramparts. Yeah, it looks like it's seen some some action. Much, uh, much. When you read about it in the Westford, you will see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next, we are going to Gundaren's Keep. 
So Gundren's Keep is actually uh, noted in the Westford book. We have an, uh, we uh, have a, another a, a wonderful piece of art showing Gundren's Keep. So this one is a gooey, a gooey art. Th this is a gooey art. Yes, yes, it's, yes. And 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 some of those that you've seen, we're going to do paint overs and some of the things that we do, right, to to uh, add to our, our artwork repertoire, so yeah. to speak. This is just to give you guys a feel. Right. Yes, yeah. you can see how desolate it looks, right? And and um, this Gundren's Keep is actually, I believe, where we are beginning the. Um, uh, the dead and fallow adventure. Okay. So this is wonderful. Yes. Yeah, that's. It, I love. I love how like shattered. Is that the right term? Distressed, I guess. Distressed. Distressed. Yes, it unquestionably. Looks. Because they all right. They all don't have the funding that they really need. Need. Yeah. But it's it's kind of like oh I was gonna talk about pop culture um kind of like yeah. Game of Game of Thrones where um it's like the uh, where is it where it's cold. Oh, uh, you mean up in the um, at the wall? Yeah. Yeah, the wall. The wall yeah, yeah, it's like it, that's what it kind of feels like. Is like it's like it's underfunded because people don't necessarily see the value because the danger isn't right in front of their face. Well, because you know if you live all the way south in yeah. London, Wall, right, or Southland or Midland, right, you're like this is this is so far away from me, right, and we got right. all our own problems, right. Yeah. But they don't think about the hordes that lie across the river. Like the, yeah. yeah. I, it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> 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 All right, what's next? Okay, um, next up is Stonehammer. So Stonehammer, yes, yeah, Stonehammer is um, uh, a, a, a really uh, a cool little uh, a cool little keep that I think you will like. It uh, it has um, a dwarven uh, back, uh, backing, right? So so uh, there in Blackrock, I believe both have uh, have some some decent. Uh, Help from uh, from from uh, from the dwarven folk. So um, so uh, Stonehammer um, it lies between the two large border fortresses, right? It lies between uh, Wardane Shield and the Grey Citadel, which we'll talk about uh, here in a moment. Um, and it is actually the center of the battle line, often where you know fighting can be fiercest, and um, and it is it is. Uh, it is definitely supported, uh, but it often must fend off uh, some surprise assaults and and do them do that without uh, support uh, for some time. So um, now, Ward and Shield is also um, backed by Havensden, right? And the Grey Citadel is backed by Hardcastle, which we'll talk about the Grey Citadel in a minute. Anyway, Stonehammer is, if it were to be bypassed, it would be terrible for the, the, the people of the Bundelin. And it is not a large keep, but it is, uh, it has got some some oomph there. Yes. So if it's backed financially by the dwarven population, is they get a fun, uh, Black Rock is more funded, but they get a lot of help uh, from uh, from Havensden, uh, which is which is where most of the refugees uh, from Kalanta, uh, when the when the war was uh, was in, in process, they ran right. They went south. They ended up in Havensden. But like racially speaking, in terms of who would. Like, would the dwarves defend this keep? Or so they're, they're just our contingents, just, right? Okay. They're, you're so right it's, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's all from one army, but they're the ones who fund. But different, you know, different. Uh, so so certain churches, like Wardain Shield, right? So certain churches, the, the Church of Wardain, and actually w in conjunction with a number of other of, of the churches, actually provide additional funding beyond what the Republic uh, provides to, like, Wardain Shield, right? And so this is what makes some of these places a little more tough and a little more oomphy, right? in some places a little less, right? And so that, uh, for your players, right, gives this marvelous opportunity to go to a place that's really military and very, you know, marching right. and all that stuff, or a place where it does feel a little more like the wall, right, that you talked about in, in that marvelous tale of Game of Thrones, right? right? So, which, uh, uh, which is, uh, what a wonderful series, right? Not yeah. just not just the, the show, right, to the books. Yeah. I read them many, many years ago. So, uh, marvelous, yes. What's next? Okay, next up is Math Mathu's... So hold yes, that. so <laughs> Mathu's Mathu's hold fast, which Guys, is a little no keep, <laughs> which is a little keep, and uh, Math, and you can see in this image, right? This is uh, this is one of the undead uh, Fazut uh, mounted, uh, looking across the river at uh, Mathu's hold fast. This is also a nod to a number of wonderful Matts and Matthews who. Um, I have spelt it wrong. Oh, oh. On the slideshow. Oh goodness gracious! It is. Girlfriend. It is with two T's. Yes, it is with two T's. But this is a nod to our wonderful Matthews. Uh, that uh, that uh, there's a number of them who have been marvelous in uh, in supporting us, and and uh, so we gave them a little 
a little keep on the borderlands that, uh, that you they, were and, such a big supporter that we gave you a little keep yes yeah <laughs> said, said, well, yeah, little, but there's all kinds of you know this camera many there's all kinds of easter eggs in the maps oh, and yeah. in the books you know I think if you see Mand, Mand, Mandaroo oh there's Mandaroo yes Mandaroo. of course yeah, Mandaroo. <laughs> there's a little town called Mandaroo yes. let's keep going <laughs> okay next up is Oh dying yes, grows. the dying grove. So near uh, near Mathu's old fast is a, is a is a place called the dying groves, and and uh, and this is a place that your your players might be able to to investigate to uh, to go into um, because there are strange things happening there, but there are also. Uh, remnants of, of certain ethnic uh, circumstances and, and situations that they might be able to to find uh, things of importance and uh, this is also a place that Kalnovic uh, knows about and of course Kalnovic is doing his best to make sure that the Republic does not gain access to this because it does lie across the river yes Don't. marvelous Okay, um, next up is the Grey Citadel. So the Grey Citadel is, is much like a city. Um, and and the, the, uh, uh, we, actually, when you look in the, in the, um, uh, in the Westford uh, uh, tome, you will read about this, uh, this place. It is, uh, it is uh, overseen by uh, General Havru Gondur, who is a, uh, who is a uh, Gorund uh, of incredible military prowess, and um, and the uh, the Council of the Grey Cloaks in support, and uh, the whole military is called, they are called the Knights in Grey. There is the Grey Citadel Militia and various mercenary companies. This is the the the, the tip of the spear uh, along the borderland. Uh, the borderlands. Uh, this is this is the tip of the spear along the river, and this citadel, if were it to fall, uh, it would it would spell the doom of the Northern Republic uh, without question. There's wonderful lore about it. I can't uh, obviously I, I don't want to keep getting here to get too long, but there's wonderful lore about it in the Westford Tome. I think you will love the the structure of of all is there. There's there's notable families. There's there's places to go. There's taverns. There's it is a it is a, a really uh, wonderful place uh, that is actually treated almost as a, one of the cities of of the Republic. Okay. Well, I think that concludes our tour and also um it concludes our show because we need to start actually streaming it so we will do the Gurund, uh, we will do the Gurund <laughs> and, and everything so real quick i got to do just a couple of things because yes, i got to make sure so the next contributors uh, guild oh yeah you didn't do black rock i did not do black okay just uh, kidding hold on hold on <laughs> this is not the end of our uh tour so this is black rock and it is the one that is most funded by the dwarves um and uh, um uh, they uh, they put a lot of, of money into this because it actually supports them because they're not that far south uh, of of Black Rock so so there is uh, and this is a wonderful piece of artwork and you can just you know feel yourself there and I, I will finish camera Mandy because we need to go because I know that the timing is getting long so I hope you enjoyed this my friends this is uh, this is kind of the thing we're going to try to do to give you more lore um, and we will uh, we will uh, this was kind of a long one because there's so many keeps but uh, but we will uh, we will do the Gurund. Uh, next uh, next uh, show where we're going to talk to you about stone singers and the stone moots and and really uh, give you a lot of information about the races. But I want to make sure before we close that the next contributors round is about to get started. So if you are a member of the Contributors Guild, you should get emails from us. So hopefully you haven't set us to spam or any of that kind of stuff because I think we are going to spend some more time in the gloom port. And the gloom board uh, needs, uh, because it is nine poster size maps, it needs lots of locations. And so I think we're going to do that. Now, uh, in terms of the locations, remember, the goal in Zyalthe is not to have crazy magic things all over the place, teleporting shops, shops that get up and walk around, right? This is not the goal. The goal is to create more interesting places that are not crazy magic, because Zyalthe is not crazy magic. It is high fantasy, and it also is um, a magical fantasy, but uh, but we don't have sort of this uh, this uh, very uh, extensive uh, magical thing going on. In fact, a lot of people are afraid of magic. So those of you who are new, spend some time in the in the lore and and understand. But uh, here in the next week or two, we're going to be sending out an email, and we're going to start uh, making places for the Gloomport, and uh, I think it's going to be marvelous. 
All right, my friends. That is all I have, Karma Mandy. Is there anything else you wish to speak of this day? Uh, no. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to go out with um, the beauty of Zyatha. All right. May all your adventures be sticky, my friends. Ta-ta. Thank you.